Hi there, this is Patrick Mamelli of the Dutch band Pestilence, and you are listening to the Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Hi Patrick, it's a pleasure to have you here on the Metal Bloodshed on Metal Messiah Radio with the Vampire. Hey man, hey, thanks for having us and uh, thanks for the interest. Uh, let's get rolling. You're always welcome, Patrick. Patrick, you was born in Enschede, the Netherlands, and is also a death metal singer and guitarist who is best known for uh, your work with a technical death metal band Pestilence and still a member of the band since its formation in 1986. How did you become a metal musician and to which bands or bands have inspired you and to what can you tell us about about Neuromorph. Okay, well, first off, I started playing guitar when I was four years old and was already interested in music. And I was very young and when Beatles were still popular and stuff like that. So <laughs> going in from the Beatles to later on trying to figure out what they're playing, I found bands like Deep Purple, Kiss, and more rockish because at that point, you didn't have too much heavy metal going on. I mean, there was like Iron Maiden and you had Judas Priest, but pretty much the heaviest stuff that you can listen to at that point so yeah i guess we started about the same time i remember the late 60s the early 70s patrick yes exactly the same here it's like growing up on the verge of the birth of death metal when it started back in the day when the florida death metal was still really really strong we were heavily into tape trading as youngsters when we were 16 17 we're tape trading with guys that we knew from the states and it would be by mail there was no internet and we just sent tapes to each other exactly. and then we, yeah and then we found out about the bands you know we found out about mantas that became death we heard early possessed but we were also listening to punk bands like discharge or you just just other other music as well that was like heavy cryptic slaughter septic death <laughs> good old napalm death <laughs> so um, yeah so we were actually when when i started you know we were just we're all friends from school and we we're fans of, of the music and then when Slayer came with Show No Mercy that was like the kind of that triggered me to start playing heavy music myself before this I was just noodling on my guitar and I never really felt like playing everybody else's music not even for my own enjoyment I always tried to come up with material myself but I think that early Slayer kind of got me really into it but Patrick if I'm not wrong was it 2013 or 14 that you started a new project should I say so or band under the name Necromorph actually. What happened to this band? It's just like uh, Necromorph is a title of the Obsidio album I think it is and after this I decided I wanted to do something else in music and because I'm a fan of jazz music and fusion I wanted to start a project not Necromorph but Neuromorph and because Necromorph already some German band had the same band name so I, I figured do Neuromorph which is even better which is more jazz fusion and extra experimental music and I know I'm not gonna be famous with that music at all that's just like music for musicians the thing is after Obsideo I kind of felt like you know since the record company I think it was Candlelight at that time they got bankrupt and uh, I think that that album really didn't get the promotion that it actually deserved I I've always had the passion and fire to continue with pestilence but after being an adult because when you're young 16 or 18 you don't care you just want to play music but <laughs> as time progresses you need to get some type of income and if you're not getting that income it's very hard to continue making music because if it's not getting you any money whatsoever even for a big band name like pestilence it's been really difficult and I think just now with hey Dion I'm finally making some money and it comes really late because I'm already 50 now you know it's like it's crazy don't worry we're still young Patrick <laughs> well yeah but I don't see it that way really much because the thing is that although I look young I feel 50 you know it's not like I have all these uh, this experience and I see all these young kids coming up and they're very talented as well and I see the music industry changing so much over the years you have death core you have gent you have slam slamming death you got brutal death there's all these death grind you got all these new forms of music that I don't want to be that old guy that 
says, well, what about old school death metal? It's like, and thank God there are still a lot of fans that are very loyal and that are of my age or maybe a little bit younger that still recognize Pestilence for what it is. And I was very surprised uh, when we did the European tour that every show was sold out. I didn't know that there was so much interest still in, in the band, which um, I then I tend to believe that we still matter in, in this music industry and in the scene as well. But Patrick, let me tell you one thing. It's uh, for you to feel much better. And I've been saying this each time I had this great opportunity to interview big bands like I do and now with you, Pestilence. You guys are not ready to get tired because the new generation is not ready for taking over. And not to talk bad, people still want to hear the death metal, the brutal death or trash metal. Come on, the melodic death, the bands from the 80s, from the 90s. I think we in general from that era still have to stick around for a while. Yes, I'll definitely. I'm not uh, I'm not willing to die yet myself as well. I keep on continuing and we have a new record label, uh, as you know, Hammer Hard Records, and they're doing an awesome job with the re-releases of the albums, the old albums, the first four. Okay. And, you know, now they did um, Hey Dion for me and I'm very happy the way everything is going. We're making a five-year plan now. This is just the first year that I'm working with them and I'm already making more money than I have ever gotten in the 29 years that I've been doing Pestilence. So finally I can relax a little bit and, <laughs> and not be so fucking tight because a lot of people don't understand that there's like two things about me. I'm always very straightforward and I'm very honest with what I say and sometimes it's not the most tactical way in saying stuff but hey that's just the way I am okay. so whenever I talk about something I'm talking with my heart and with a lot of passion and when it's a lot of stress around me because of bad publicity or bad promotion or something that goes wrong but if it goes on for years and fans they don't know this fans just know you from the albums and from the interviews but in order to record an album just like the recording itself is two weeks or three weeks but to make new songs for an album it takes more than a year so there's hard work and stress behind it to make everything work so if there's years and years where record companies have fucked you over money wise no yeah. royalties and stuff like that for me that kind of gets to me and I'm so happy that we hooked up with Hemahar because finally stuff is getting better okay Patrick going back to Neuromorph are you guys making an album for this band or are you just doing music and that's it well the thing is is that everybody can nowadays can record themselves Everybody's got a home studio, so I don't think that there will be any problem in recording material for Neuromorph. I might even get Hammerheart to be interested in it, or I'll find another record company to do so. But since Pestilence is getting big again, I have to put in all my focus and my time to Pestilence at this moment. So it, I think that Neuromorph for this moment is in the freezer, but it's still happening. I still have a lot of years of creativity and musicality inside of me, so that will definitely happen. Same goes for the other project that I have, which is going to be like a death grind type of stuff with Adri Klosterbaat from Sinister on vocals. So that's going to be pretty brutal. Do you already have a name for it? It's Mordzucht. Okay. It's a, it's a Dutch word called like, it kind of translates into the urge to kill. And in Dutch, it's called Mordzucht. Okay, very great to know. Uh, Patrick, Enschede, a nice city in the province of Overijssel in the Twente region. I must say, a city that has seen the birth of great Dutch metal musician and a place I like uh, so much and I really enjoy each time I visit. How do you see the metal scene has developed nowadays compared to what it was back then in the 80s and 90s in Enschede and everywhere in uh, Holland itself? Enschede was considered it's in the east that we're like farmers compared to the west so this is has been always like an issue for people that don't come from the east from Enschede for example we had the possibility to travel to Germany within half an hour time so there was the link to Germany and Germany is also of course a big market and at that point you had Roadrunner Germany as well so it was not that difficult to cross the border and uh, also kind of get a taste of the German scene as well but as far as the Dutch scene goes there was a lot of 
jealousy and animosity towards pestilence and towards each other, actually, because the thing is that when we got signed to Roadrunner with a worldwide deal, all the other Dutch bands that were out there were very jealous of this fact. And we just want to make music. And I still think to this day, it's we were just lucky. We were really lucky. We were at the right moment at the right time. That's why Roadrunner picked us. And after this, we paved the road, actually, for the other Dutch bands to get signed and get a record deal. So actually, they should be happy that we paved the road for those guys. You know, then Gorefest came and yeah. and all the other bands yeah, that were out there. Yeah, yeah. but for us, we kind of stayed to ourselves in Enschede and we were not too much of, you know, going out there on touring. We did some shows, but you, you just feel the animosity of other cities because when you come to their city and you come from the east from Enschede, they consider you as being farmers. So they look kind of look down at you. When we got bigger and stuff like this and when you understand that Holland was not a target market for us anymore, we didn't feel very comfortable at first. So we went more, we went focused on Germany, we went to France, we Italy. We, I mean, we did pretty much everywhere. And also stuff had changed because then the internet came up and now it's, it's so much easier to get in contact with other metal hats, <laughs> I guess, I suppose. Like we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, like we're doing now. This is But, crazy, right? I But mean, it's awesome. Do you think this was a plus point for the metal itself? All this technology has evolved for all these years. Well, definitely. I think that the fact is that back in the days, the only way you can listen to metal is to listen to it at home or at Francis homes or you go to the record store and you buy a CD or you buy an album and then When there's metal heads there, you know, you, you could, you know, conversate with those guys. But now the Internet has got all these communities and there's always metal music to, to be found everywhere on the planet. It got to a point where it became like a global thing. First, it was like the Florida thing. And then it was the Scandinavia thing. And then came the black metal mm -hmm. that was popped for a bit and now it's getting popular but now I really think that only like the, the the good bands they will survive and they will keep on continuing making great music and that's the, the reason why they're still there there's a lot of bands that um, I know from past that just quit playing because there was no money to be made and uh, you know no record company no support from record companies to record or anything you know so times have changed a lot I think that now we're in a time that we have to use technology to, to get ahead You know, we can't look back all the time and glorify the old days because you always have to look forward, I think. It's a positive thing, I think, when you can download, at least that's what I recommend to each metalhead. You have to buy the album, Patrick. You have to support the band. If you want to continue enjoying metal, you have to support the bands. Otherwise, in a year or two, they won't be here no more if you don't buy their music, if you don't support them. Well, I think that is so true because, but also, I think it's even more important important to just go to the shows and because that's where the band still can make some money and buy the t-shirts and buy the that's merchandise right. because if you buy the albums the percentage that is being paid to the musician is really not that that much and also the fact that everybody is downloading and uh, back in the days a band could sell hundred thousand units and now it's just like if you're getting 10 you 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 must be really good and happy about it the reason about downloading is just a reason that you that wants to go there and download this album one purpose for you to listen to it and in order to buy it yeah that's it because i still think that mp3 is not very good quality it's like it's kind of terrible if you compare it to let's say an lp or a cd which is you know which is even better so yeah i think that of course people are going to be interested and um, they're going to find ways to to download it but you're right they should buy the album and then show some love and support to the bands that actually do it. I'm still a fan that like CDs, especially with the band signature on in my collection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I'm not a collector because I think that you can't take none of that stuff into your grave, so I'm not a big collector at all. I'm just a collector of memories, I guess. <laughs> Saloons were originally formed in the Netherlands in 1986 as a trash metal band, and later they became a death metal band and incorporated more jazz and fusion influences to their music after releasing a numerous of 
albums like Malaya's Marificarium and 88 Consuming Impulse in 89, Testimony of the Ancient in 91, Spears in 93 and has worked with different musicians like uh, Patrick Utterweig, Jeroen Tesseling, Tony Choi, Martin Van Drunen, Marco Folius, George Mayer, Tim Young and many more Spesselings broke up in 1994 when the band members decided to work on their own bands. What is for you to be part of Pestilence, a legendary band that has been a big part of the metal scene in the history of the Netherlands and how come you decided to reform the band in 2008, Patrick? I guess I am the founder of the band and I've been the only one that has survived. I've always, since the first demo, that was actually death metal. And when we recorded first album Malays, it was more thrashy. It's because we started to listen to, actually, I started listening to bands that were more thrashy and I kind of found out that it's not good for me to listen to metal because I absorb like a sponge even though I mean at that point I was creating my own style I was being influenced too much by because I was a fan myself at first when I started doing consuming that was the answer to death leprosy really and then when we did testimony that was the first time when I decided to just to work only on pestilence and only listen to pestilence and breathe pestilence that's when I kind of came up with that melodical death metal, really. It hadn't been done before. So I'm kind of happy that the album, because it, if you look at the album sales, Testimony was the best selling album. Okay. So that but was that. And then after Spheres, we decided to call it quits because Spheres was an experimental album. And we did that album because we liked it. But it was more to get away from the Roadrunner people because they were treating us not so good. They were flooding the scene with numerous death metal bands and we felt like we were not that special for them anymore so we figured if we make an album that they can't really sell and they will drop us and that's what happened so actually we made spheres to get dropped of course they make a statement that blah 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 this and that but you know to be honest we made that album to get out of the contract and it worked so then we stopped <sighs>
You have to understand that I am pestilence. Yeah, if I don't continue, there is no pestilence. There That's is no true. band. That's true. I have always composed the music all by myself. That's why pestilence still sounds like this. And I've always tried to find better musicians, better than the previous musicians that I work with, because I feel like I, when I grow as a musician, I have to be surrounded by people that are equally leveled as me. When the internet had proven it itself to be very valuable in this respect, it was so much easier to get in contact with great great musicians approach them and say well hey i'm patrick mamelli uh, do you want to join the band or something like this pretty much everybody was always very interested so the, i i used the internet as a tool to send them musical files or to get the attention of the musicians that i want to work with but there were plenty of years that i just quit playing music because i was so fed up with the music scene it's not making any money no good management not a good record company to work with so that's when I decided to just call it quits mm -hmm. I had numerous of regular jobs and but after that after a few years this gave me that itch I wanted to make music again I wanted to be uh, Mr. Pestilence again so okay yeah then I just started again but the whole thing is Patrick if you have to look back more than 30 years of the career of this great band Pestilence was such a big name and you the man behind it how do you feel well yeah of course and but it it really has to do with the love for the music style that keeps me going because like I said 29 years no money nothing just <laughs> you know trying to get your name across you know that takes a lot of heart and passion <laughs> and and honestly you know I, I still when I go and do a show whatever I still feel like a kid you know I still have that same holy fire that I had when I was 16 years old in my bedroom practicing for eight or ten hours the band has released three albums since its reformation in 2008 the first one Resurrection, Macabre in 2009, Doctrine in 2011 uh, provided a more technical approach in comparison to a more straightforward and crushing Resurrection, Macabre, Obsidio that uh, deliver more of a past and showcase what Pestilence is all about with great tracks like Soul Rot, Transition, Displace, Distress, Necromorph and many more a great track that has made this release one of the band's greatest effort so far. Pratik, if you have to go five years back in time, would you leave this album Obsidio exactly the same or else what would you change? And are you guys satisfied with what you and the band has conquered with this release? This release was, I think I still like this one after Hey Dion the best. A lot of people get stuck in time and they will say, well, it's consuming because it's with Martin Van Drunen on vocals. Or some people will say, no, 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 it's testimony because that was groundbreaking and blah, blah, blah. So for me, Upsideo was one of the biggest highlights of my career because we mastered the, the eight string guitar and we kept the pestilence style alive, which is very difficult when you play eight string. The vocals are really, really brutal. Um, we have lots of blast, something that we hadn't done before that much. This is the reason why we never done that is because Marco Fadis never could play a blast beat so that's why we just let it for what it was but when Altus of Madness came out we really liked that album a lot we told Marco that we wanted Blast and he said no way I'm not going to Blast so since we're like a democratic band we just left it for that but with Obsideo we could just like with David Haley on, on drums the guy from Psychroptic okay yeah yeah he that guy's really really fast so we could finally we could make an album with Blast beats like this and keeping the Pestilence style really I'm very happy with the outcome of, of this album. Do you believe there will be a re-release of Obsideo with that more bass beat that you wanted? Let's go back to your first question. To go back in the past, what would I do different on that album? Well, I, I wouldn't do anything different because at that point in time, that was the best I could do. I think you should never change a painting that you like. Just leave it to what it is. I don't know if there's going to be a re-release of this because the record company Candlelight, they went bang 
bankrupt and I think the rights to that album went to another record company and we're currently trying to approach these people to see if we find those and regain those rights so we can re-release it okay. so hopefully Let, let's hope you can do it Patrick yes I hope so too to go back further with this interview the album Obsidio was uh, the first of the three albums released via Candlelight Record instead of the first two that was released via Mascot Record Patrick uh, do you think the album has received a much bigger promotion worldwide via Candlelight Records compared to those others that was released via Mascot Records Mascot they released Resurrection Macabre they were doing their best and it's a risk for them to be a part of the comeback that Pestilence made and although that album is I think it's a strong album a lot of fans they didn't like it that much because they compared it to and they had high expectations I guess and they compared it to my previous work and you know then then they compare it again to testimony or consuming and then for them it's not as memorable but I think it was an omen for what was to come with Pestilence because it was our first comeback and then I thought it had some really really great songs like Devouring Frenzy Fiend uh, all these songs are kind of really great and in my approach of composing music I have never changed uh, the riffs uh, could easily be on a new Pestilence album because those are the riffs that I come up with in my head so nothing really has changed that much the only odd oddling in the whole discography is, is Spheres that's the only album that is a little bit weird but the rest are like typical Pestilence albums really it just depends on what critic is giving great to an album if somebody's right. yeah it's because if somebody is in favor and it says it's a nine it's worth a nine or an eight a lot of people will jump on that and say wow it's great <laughs> and then when the same person says is well it's shit it's a five and people won't buy it so it's uh you you're walking a very thin line when you know somebody asks you what do you feel about the album because mm -hmm. i always feel that all of my albums are great as a great metal heads i mean you have to listen to the albums yourself i mean to get your own opinion yeah that is very much so but you know i think that a lot of the metal heads they do understand how it works and they can see quality from shit you know so the thing is is that when you make high quality music uh, the expectations for the next album has to be high quality as well and that's uh, that's a little bit of a pressure because when you make a hit like out of the body it's difficult to make an out of the body part two hit you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah there's no way the band has to compete with itself yeah i mean it's a constant evolvement and progress that you know one has and i might get influenced by anything you know because you know like i said before i'm not really listening to music at all so i might just get influenced by the source where everybody gets the music from i guess from your own brain so i don't know how that works it's all depends yeah. what inspire you at that moment definitely but i'd rather be compared to my own music than compared to let's say another band well pestilence sounds like morbid angel or pestilence sounds like death or pestilence sounds like this a lot of people say well pestilence sounds like pestilence when you put on an album pretty much the listener will know that it is pestilence the band releases different compilation albums uh, the the century penance in 2015 prisons in the past also in 2015 and the prisons of the past life at dynamo open air 1992 that will bring you way way back in time patrick yeah definitely what was the idea behind uh, these compilation albums and did you came up with this compilation cause fans want it and still want them all the materials that was the choice and the idea of the record company that um that i guess that wants to make some money and in the meantime i want to make some money as well so we came up with that idea to if there is enough interest is to re release that material yeah so it's like when when there's interest from the fans because you know back in the days it, you only had cassette right uh -huh. so we had the, the demo on cassette now kids don't even know what a cassette player is so then we decided to put it on cd and, you know, or on lp and everybody liked it a lot and because it's a part of history of pestilence you know you can understand from the first demo to where we are now what <laughs> progression we have made wow and especially this one the prisons of a past life in dynamo i mean to remember this giant festival at that time and they shut down and now it started very very small dynamo open air remember this great festival huge festival at the time yeah i think we played in front of 42,000 people oh, and that was the uh, first time i was playing in front of that much people and i remember right before the show i had to throw up because i was so nervous getting on stage <laughs> you kidding so yeah man and so when when we went on everything went really well and yeah 
yeah, we were very happy with the reaction of the crowd. So we just went for it. And uh, so happy that, that it got released on a CD. <laughs> Legendary Pestilence have returned to the death metal scene with Aegean, their seventh full-length album release on 26th of January 2018 via Hammer Heart Records. Patrick, how was the songwriting gone and what is different about it compared to Obsidio? Well, no, it was pretty much the pretty much the same. I come up with all the music, I come up with all the drum parts, I come up with all the bass parts, and I just have to find people to play my music. That is actually what's happening on Hey Dion and that is what happened on Obsideo as well. But the difference is the is the musicians that I work with. Every time I want to progress, then I need better musicians. I need more talented people and fresh ears and fresh minds to surround me. And when I composed 12 songs for that album or 13 songs for that album, I reached out to, um, to the guys. You know, I found the drummer on internet. I saw him play with another band. So I just approached him and And of course, everybody knows who Patrick Mamelli is. So I got their interest and the rest is history. I sent them the musical files, the way I want them to play my music, except for the drummer who came to, to Germany, record there in four days. The rest of the musicians, they recorded the, at their home studio and they just sent me the files. That's how Hey Dion was born and created, okay. actually. Okay. So then you really have to have trust in the musicians that you work with because they're not there with you in the studio. So 
you can't control anything. You have to let them do their job. And that's why it turned out to be so so fresh and so full of energy, really. Dutch death metal legend Pestilence once again have released one of the stronger album of their career and potential album of the year, I would say, with uh, He Jun. The songs are perfect blend of thrashing death metal and the band's uh, progressive fusion leanings. I must say that I really enjoyed uh, the album so far with all the great tunes like a non-physical existent, multi-dimensional, uh, oversold to say uh, just some. How was the band's work with Dan Swano at Unison Studio for the uh, mastering and at the studio lab for the recording gone, uh, Patrick? The, the only thing that, because I, I never met Dan in person, I just knew about his reputation. I told my management and I told the record company that I wanted him to, to master it because I know that he can pull it off and you know come out with a with a great product and well he was a lot in the lottery because the, the album sounds really fantastic fresh it has got all the elements of pestilence and everything is crystal clear so we're really happy with that and that comes because when we recorded at Space Lab the engineer is really old school himself so he's not depending on using a lot of samples and he just wants to create a more live atmosphere with analog instruments and stuff like that yeah so his <laughs> studio is more focused on recording analog than recording digital so we found a nice combination a nice mix of both worlds and then the mixing product goes to Dan and Dan finishes the painting and it turned out to be a Mona Lisa <laughs> Dano makes right? miracles <laughs> yeah Dan makes miracles yeah. the band release Hedion via this great Dutch record label Hammer Hearts Records which I want to say hello to Jan a very great guy we work uh, close to as well how is everything going so far with the promotion of the new album and what are the band's advantage with Hammer Heart record compared to what uh, the band has received from Candlelight thing is is that Hammer Heart is is a, is a mid-size company that means that they are not flooded with work and they have their focus on their main bands and one of their main bands is Pestilence so I'm very happy with the team that we're working with now which is Jan and of course Guido the label boss and Wouter okay. so we work really close together and we get the job done I like short lines that means that if I want to talk to the boss I can call him and he will answer the phone <laughs> if you're working with yeah because if you're working with labels like for example Roadrunner uh, you will never get to speak to the boss you know you just speak to the middleman so I feel like we're now more on top of our game and uh, which we can create our own situations and we can come up with the marketing strategies and and they actually they listen to me so with my 30 years of experience in the scene I know what people like to hear and people like to see and they're working closely with me to, to achieve my goals and eventually that's gonna make them some money as well okay great I want to say brilliant cover artwork for uh, the desk which was created by Michael Laurent also work with Behemoth Nile Evocation Vader uh, Necrophages a very talented Polish graphic designer who perfectly churned Vaseline's name and you, Patrick, vision and concept into an art. Patrick, how did you get to work with Michael, who did an outstanding job doing the cover artwork for Hedion? And tell us about the problem, if I have to say so, the band or you encounter about some accusation of about some plagiarism. Yeah, plagiarism. It had to do with the trust that you have in people and then when they did the Obsideo cover for us, the Triple Sace guys, we really liked the, the album cover so I gave him the chance to, to make another album cover for me and I did not know until I think one week or two weeks uh, prior to the release that there seems to be like a community on the internet that kind of is like a, a, an art police and these guys they monitor the bands that come out and they, they look at the artwork and they, they will try to find similarities with the originals let's say mm -hmm. so they found some plagiarism and you know we did not know of this of course because mm -hmm. Pestilence is an original band and I don't want to have like copy paste stuff on my album right okay so immediately as we found out we dropped the album cover we kind of promoted the idea on the internet through a via platforms that we were looking for um, new guys to do our artwork and Michael was one of those guys and he sent us the 
after I gave him my vision of how the artwork should be like, th- he came up with this, and it fits really good to the music. <laughs> yeah, an outstanding cover artwork. Wow, you know, just looking to this cover artwork makes me want to buy the album. Yeah, that's. I think that's it. I mean, everything should be right. If the music is really good and an album cover is not that good, it, there is some. There's some. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you know, everything on this album was just totally, totally perfect. Yeah, very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the band just did one of the longest Pestilence European tour ever and also the most successful. How long has uh, this fight, uh, the Black Winter Tour, last? And how many cities have you guys visited? That's a good question because <laughs> I don't keep count, but we, I think we did over 30 shows and we had one day off. So <laughs> we are just continuously doing the shows and we're, I mean, I'm 50 and I'm still, still jumping because I didn't feel tired at all and my voice was good and the audience was great pretty much everywhere the audience was great most of the shows were sold out and the crowds were amazing yeah I was very happy with that because you know you don't want to be that band that plays in front of 50 people then it's really time to quit but crowds were insane and Patrick I read about some shows that has been cancelled one of them was in Gran Canaria and a couple yes. shows in the Netherlands itself and why has uh, this happened and uh, will the band be able to resume back the shows uh, to all these uh, fans that has already bought their ticket at uh, some point yes. of time? Yes, definitely. We already rescheduled those shows. We had to cancel those shows because my guitar player, Colleen, his father passed away. Uh, oh. I think it was like a couple of days after he returned from the from the tour. Yeah, that's really bad. So we yeah. uh, we think that family is the most important and we had to pay respect to this and uh, that's why we had to cancel the shows. But those shows are still happening. But those shows, I mean, the couple ones in the Netherlands those who are supposed to be the album release party right yes that is true I mean of course now it will not be a release party anymore but we will definitely do those shows and just perform and have a great set list for them as I talking to you I must say I feel very lucky to catch you for this interview just hours away before you boarding the plane and uh, heading to North Central and South America for your tour with uh, this great uh, Dutch band to Sinister started March 22nd in Monterrey, Mexico. I remember interview Toop Dane of Sinister in the back in 2017 and I had this great opportunity to meet with the whole band at Metal Days in Slovenia. What a great band, what a great show they've done in Slovenia at Metal Days. I mean, I am sure you guys have are gonna have a lot of fucking great time together with Sinister. Okay, um, for all of our North and Central South Americans fans where will the band be performing on this trip together with Sinister and what are the set lists will be like <laughs> well the set list is going to be still a surprise really because <laughs> I know that we're going to be playing songs of a Hey Dion but I mean it's going to be the second time that I'm going to visit South America that means that we're going to have to give them all the hits all the albums that we can memorize and and then we play you know the best songs for them mm-hmm. so we're going to be playing pretty much four or five songs of Hey Dion and the rest is just going to be testimony, consuming, malaise so we're going to make sure that the fans go home happy <laughs> for old and young and old <laughs> yes, yes, and I guess we're just playing like two or three shows together with Sinister and they have their own little South America tour and we have our own little tour, so, but our paths will meet and certainly this will be a historic moment but don't you mind to announce now uh, where are you the band still will be playing Patrick I'm not, I'm not sure are you gonna be in Mexico you're gonna be in Colombia you're gonna be in Argentina yes we're going to be all over the place I have on my Facebook account I have the poster okay uh, where we will all be going okay you might want to check that yeah. out yeah so we're doing two shows in Mexico Monterrey and Mexico City and then 24th of March Guatemala and then El Salvador Costa Rica then we go to Honduras and then we go to Bogota Colombia <laughs> We go to Lima, Peru. We go to Santiago, Chile. Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm really anxious to to eat some of the Argentinian carne, the meat, you know. <laughs> and then, Patrick, let me ask then, you one thing. Let me ask you, how is your Spanish? <laughs> 
Uh, my Spanish is not that good, but I can understand Spanish. Uh, I'll have a little bit more problems in uh, Brazil because they speak Portuguese. Uh -huh. But in Brazil, we will have our uh, sound man on this tour who is Portuguese. <laughs> He's from Brazil, so he will translate everything for me. Uh -huh. We will have 10 shows, I think, in, in Brazil because Brazil is really, really big. So, yeah, very excited. 20, I think 22 or 23 shows. And the shows that we're going to be playing Sinister is in, let's see, in Santiago, Chile, okay. in Colombia. And that was it. Just two <laughs> shows I see here. When you will be in Colombia, I think it's so close here. I might take a plane to Bogota and see your show. That would be amazing. If you do, let me know up front. I will get you on the list so you can get in. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Patrick, I'm not gonna take any more time. You have to relax to start a uh, uh, packing. Are you ready to pack? To My go wife to already pack, but, but she's cooking a really nice pasta for me right now, so uh, <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, Patrick, I want to thank you very much for giving us this great opportunity to interview you and uh, for the fans to get to know more, much more about uh, this uh, new album of Bastille Lands, you know, to get to know more about the band itself. And I want to hand you the microphone of Metal Messiah Radio for you to invite all your fans, your fans to support the bands, to buy this great masterpiece, uh, Hadion, and to buy the whole album, to see the band live in concert, whatever you may, will be playing. But talking about bands perform live, where else will Passilens be playing or be doing for the rest of 2018? I have an open mind about pretty much everything, so there's a lot of things happening after the South America tour that I can't say too much about right now because it's it's still on their way but as far as now I really want to focus on South America and give the South American people some death metal love because it's like you said before it's very very important that we support each other it's a great opportunity to come back to all these beautiful countries hopefully we can get a taste of their food as well because <laughs> yes. I love to eat <laughs> Okay, Patrick, the microphone of Metal Messiah is all used to invite all your fans to buy this great album and to support the band. Yeah, well, definitely. I don't know all these people by name or personally, but I know that being a big, big metal community and a big metal family, that we all share the same love for metal, for death metal. I really hope that there is a possibility to find out about Hey Dion, listen to Hey Dion and try to buy the album and support and and promote the band because we the fans are very important to us and we all love them man okay before you leave uh, there's any t-shirts coming out we always have like for a tour we have a tour shirt we have the fight the plague tour shirt okay. which is the pest doctor and this one is still available through the hammerheart store and i think for the south america tour we will have another great design so yeah we we try to keep up with what's happening with the band and what's relevant and always come up with new designs for us so we will have like a nice tour shirt for South America. But uh, Fight the Black was only created for the winter tour or you don't want to yes. use it for the South and Central and um, North American tour? We Actually, we tried to be as original as possible for each moment. So Fight the Plague is just for the shows that we already done for this tour. And South America will have a different shirt. Yeah, we like I said, we tried to keep it interesting and be original. So maybe in the future, this shirt will be like a more mainstream shirt that you can buy with the logo and uh, maybe some lyrics as a back print. We'll have a new design for South America. <laughs> Patrick, once again, thank you very much, my brother. I really appreciate you taking time for giving me the last moment that you have till left in Holland before you take the plane across the Atlantic Ocean. I always do it. Nine long hours and just sit down and walk around to so listen yeah. to metal. It's going to be great. I hope you're enjoying this uh, trip very much and uh, be safe. And I'm looking forward to see you in Holland because I should be there either if I don't make it for July August I will catch you I'll be there for Stonehenge or for Into the Grave or I'll see you in December or we will meet for Eindhoven Metal Meeting yes well let's do that and let's call it a date make sure <laughs> that if, if you do come to Bogota make sure that you give me a, a little message and okay. then I'll get you on the list yeah, let me check the date and check my uh, your schedule then I might drop by we can uh, see each other in Bogota that would be awesome man and otherwise 
because we see each other in Europe at in some Europe, point. To be more specific, uh, in Holland, we're going to have some Hartog Jan together. <laughs> 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 Patrick, thank you very much and have a safe flight to America and uh, as I always say, metal on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, man. Take care. Hi, this is Patrick Mamelli of the Dutch band Pestilence and I'd like to congratulate Metal Messiah Radio for its 10th anniversary. Cheers, guys.